All right, everybody, welcome back to the recent edition of Asset Revolution. This is part three of three of our education series where we dive it, dove into on episode one, the DAC FP certificate program through Rick Edelman and his uh, organization. And then the second episode, we focused on the CDAA, the Certified Digital Asset Advisor uh, program. So if you haven't listened to those two episodes, you don't need to uh, as a prerequisite for this one, but we'd highly recommend you go listen to those two because um, we are going to start off with a bit just a, of a comparative analysis. And then today, what we're going to focus on with that comparative analysis in part three is other education resources that we feel that would be of extreme value to anyone, whether financial professional or anyone looking to get into blockchain or uh, crypto or digital assets. Um, and again, we'll try to keep it as concise. And while there are many, many different resources and books and podcasts, we try to just make this into a smaller list so that way um, you can at least go take away one or two of these after you walk away with this, uh, after listening to this series. So uh, I'm happy to be joined again by Matt Koleski. Matt, uh, just a brief introduction again for the audience, uh, for those who haven't listened to the first two episodes. Yeah, well, if you have listened to the first two and you're still here, thanks for listening. You know, thanks for making it through the first two, and we're going to kind of wrap it up here. My name is Matt Koleski. I'm uh, with Arbor Digital, and I am president of Arbor Capital as well as chief compliance officer. I think we talked about it before. I'm portfolio manager here, along with Mark and Kirby at Arbor Digital. So I'm excited. We're going to kind of wrap up the last two episodes, bring it all together, and then really share some resources beyond just these two um, programs that, we, that we've been talking about. Absolutely. So let's kick this off. Let's just do a quick recap of the first two episodes then just uh, maybe just you and I jamming on, sure. you know, what do we think of the yeah. two different programs? What do we, you know, what are the big differences that we see? And uh, then we'll go into the, the other resources. I think there are some major players who are doing a lot of great work in the education space uh, beyond those two, but, but Matt, so give me your quick, quick rundown. Between the two, CDA, DAC, FP, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think they're they're both very, very good. If you are a financial professional, I think you should probably be considering both of them, especially if you're going to be adding digital assets to your portfolio. So um, definitely have a look. If you were going to start with one, I'd start with DAC, FP, just because it does a really good job of laying the foundation for, for digital assets. And then the CDAA definitely is gets more hands-on is more community around it, right? It's very, very um, uh, uh, you know, res uh, community driven. So you're you're on calls. I think we talked about this in episode two, right? You're actually like engaging with your cohorts and you can develop relationships with them. So mm -hmm. I'd start with one, you could maybe do them both together because one's self-paced and the other one though is where you talked about it's, it's also, um, uh, you know, by cohort, starts on a certain date and then finishes up. So, and you mm -hmm. take an exam. But no, I, I would start with, if you had to pick one to start with, maybe start with DAC FP. Um, but yeah, soup, I'd recommend both of them highly to <laughs> all financial professionals that need to get educated on this. On this yeah. Thing. No, thank you for those, uh, for that bit of a uh, review of both. And I, yeah, I think uh, we've talked a lot about it and especially we in developing our own internal process for when we hire people to come onto the team, because, you know, everything's growing so rapidly, you know, that is, there are going to be more uh, hires. And so we've got some more people coming on, but so what we've created, and I guess this will, this is what I'll say in terms of comparing, both are needed, right? Both are very different in terms of how they, not only the learning experience, but in terms of, you know, what you get ongoing, those are the two biggest things. And so uh, I think you and I are in agreement, you know, the first thing you start off is, is the DAC FP, right? So if you're listening to this, here's our recommendation. Start off with DAC FP, get that certificate, go through that program, get it from Rick again. The diversity in thought and language and learning from some of the uh, people that are living and breathing in this space 24-7, um, not just from the last couple of years, but even in the beginning stages of this technology, um, which has been around a lot longer than you may, you may realize, um, I think is key to getting that foundation, like you said. The ACFP sets that foundation yeah. very, very well. Um, and then... So take a year. So if you're going to create a year plan, you take a year. Beginning of the year, take your first half, go through the DAC FP, spend your time uh, and go through all the resources they share. And then in your second half, join a cohort for the CDAA. This is a year long, I would say, um, 
journey that you should take into education. And these are the first two places I would go to. And the reason I would say you do that first before doing what we're going to talk about today is because there's so much and it's hard to figure out, okay, which ones do I listen to, pay attention to? Just use that to start and take that year. Um, and then uh, another reason is because I think uh, with the CDA, you end off with that. It's definitely more engaging. You, you do your Friday calls, you actually get your hands a little bit dirty um, and you don't have to do it on your own uh, in case you're scared and you don't want to do it by yourself. So right. um, that's our recommendation. And that's what I would say between the two, take a year, develop an education plan, first half of the year, DAC FP, second half of the year, CDAA. Um, and I would recommend, you know, do CDAA in, you know, in, in Q3 of that year. And then so that way you have the last quarter to really just experiment with all this new knowledge to go apply it and internalize it a lot more. So that way, after that full year, you have everything and then you can start seeing where you want to, you know, yeah. do everything. Do, yeah, do do that. Don't don't take them both at the same time, like what I said. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> Mark, Mark's got a very more pragmatic and thoughtful approach. Yeah, take a year <laughs> and then we'll talk about some of the other resources that you can sprinkle in or even maybe use as prerequisites to both of these. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, good, good advice, Mark. I get Thanks, so excited. Matt. I'm like, just, just go, boom, boom, <laughs> just go 24 <laughs> seven. Hey, it's, it's hard not to, right. Uh, yeah. It's just such an exciting space. Um, but I, if we're going to talk about education, this is where let's dive into now the next yeah. section of this third episode. It's hard not to mention, you know, the, the hardworking team over at OnRamp. Right. And yep. so that's where I'd like to first take a second to say that on ramp is two different. And from our learning and what we've experienced with them, there's really two different segments to on ramp. There's the on ramp invest platform. Mm -hmm. So that's a platform for advisors to, if you want to start offering digital assets, invest directly into the, um, into the assets themselves. I know they have model portfolios now that they can engage with. We're actively in discussions with them to possibly how we can partner, but on ramp invest is a platform that they have. And then attached to that, they also have what's called OnRamp Academy, which is specifically right. focused on education and not just education about blockchain, crypto assets and things like that, but also around wealth strategies, you know, estate planning and financial planning, you know, all that. So I think it, it, we'd be remiss not to at least give them a, a moment Absolutely. to shine here. Right. So, Matt, I'd love for you to kind of talk about, you know, how do we find them? Tell them what's been your experience of utilizing them and how we deliver value uh, through their OnRamp Academy. Yeah, so Mark, this is you know, we've we had many conversations with OnRamp, and I think they you hit it on the head. Like they produce some really high quality content for advisors to really think about. In fact, we use some of them, right? We are mm -hmm. OnRamp clients where we are using some of their education resources internally for for us and for um, our advisors and for some of our clients. So, really, really great um, takeaways for you to use if you're a financial advisor in your practice to say, hey, here's, here's how to think about this and here's why we're doing this. And so, yeah, we've, they're, they're really, really good. They, they understand that, you know, that how to, at a, at a human level, like how to, how to engage with clients and how to talk as a financial professional to your clients. And so, yeah, I mean, Mark, I think you, and maybe you can talk a little bit more because I know you use them and you're probably more intimate with, with uh, some of the resources with building how we incorporate them into what we do. Yeah, absolutely. And this is where the thing that I'll say is that when right now the value that we give as an SMA provider is not just uh, right now, because it's so early, we have the opportunity to not just add value by being a portfolio provider for advisors. Really, I think what we've gotten feedback from, from our advisor clients is that it really goes beyond the value and, you know, the wealth strategies, financial planning, taxes, you know, having a, a robust group of, you know, CPAs or lawyers, you know, to, to talk with. And then for us to do these education events, you know, and it takes a lot, it's a 24 seven industry. It takes a lot of energy and effort just to stay up to date mm -hmm. with everything that happens. And even when you are, you, you're probably still behind, right? <laughs> and so while OnRamp does provide a platform for advisors to do it themselves and to, to integrate uh, seamlessly with their tech stacks, there, it's right now, it's just, it's a lot of energy and effort to where there's a need and that's where we kind of separate ourselves. Right. And that's why for OnRamp Academy, for us, it's a huge value add for advisors, right? We are your, Arbor Digital is not just the portfolio, and what OnRamp Academy allows us to do is really add value and be those really wealth consultants as well 
right. as to just uh, providing a portfolio for, for advisors to invest in and, and obviously their end clients. So, yeah. and one thing that highlights that is, you know, kind of the work they've done in, you know, doing their review of the CFP curriculum, you know, the, and yeah. I think um, it's really allowed us to, to really add a lot of value to our, our, our SMA clients. So uh, Matt, I don't know if, uh, does that hit on a couple of the things that you've seen? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, they provide really up to date, as you, as you pointed out, the, the CFP review um, of their curriculum, right? Really, folk, for advisors that are really you know, looking to go the next step, like they're a really, really powerful partner to be able to broaden your education. And we talked about the certification and the in the um, in the in the designation, right? But this is about ongoing education as well. And I know the other two programs also have it, but. This is a little bit through a different, little bit different lens, and I think it's really, really important. I think it's, you know, it's 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 important to say we need all of these organizations, right? Because the the asset class continues to just grow exponentially, and so having resources and different different thoughts around it is really, really important. Mm -hmm. Not just DACFP, not just the CDA, and not just on ramp, but it's it's a combination. So draw from all of them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We're going, talk, we're going to talk about a couple more too. So. <laughs> exactly. I know. And that's where, again, um, the value is not just that we give a portfolio. It's like, we know mm -hmm. how much, how much of an undertaking it is for a firm to, to start providing digital asset exposure to clients. It's not just allocating it's, you got to be able to talk to it. So again, yeah. um, OnRap Academy has been essential for us. So again, shout out to the mm -hmm. team, shout out to Ty, yep. uh, Justin Castelli, who is a former podcast guest. Yep. Uh, Tyrone, I'm calling you out right now. You, you <laughs> got to get onto the podcast. Uh, you know, not going to lie. You should have been on it already, but that's probably my fault too. But anyway, so kudos to the team, Tori over at the on-ramp yep. team yep. Um, and all the great uh, women, Caitlin Cook, again, all of the great things y'all are doing. Um, so if you don't know or haven't engaged with on-ramp, again, that's kind of our spiel about them and how great they are and how we utilize them yep. for our offer. Um, so be sure to check out their blog. Even if you don't sign up for theirs, they have a great blog. You know, Ty has a good podcast. They have a yep, great relationship yep. with CoinDesk, um, but go check them out. Yep. So Matt, I'd like to kind of yeah. turn this over to you now. Um, sure. to talk a little bit now past some of these education resources. Um, what are some other resources that you would go into? Yeah, so I'm going to go back and I'll, I'll share my screen here in a second. So when I was getting involved with digital assets, personally, there was nothing out there for, for, for advisors, right? This is back in 2012, 2013, 2014. So I was always scouring the landscape and really one of the first people that would offer, and she calls it this no hype alternative is, was Laura Shin. So her podcast, I'm going to share my screen here. Oh, I think you need to, I can't oh, share it. I think quick. I have Let's, to allow you to do that. So Laura Shin, and she just wrote a book, which I have ordered and I haven't read it yet, but um, her podcast was fundamental to me. The guests that she had on over the last, you know, what, four years or five years, however long she's been doing it, um, was fantastic. Because, you know, there's so much just noise on YouTube and FUD. Um, so her podcast was definitely you know, one of the best and continues to be one of the best. So I would definitely listen to her. Obviously, if you want to go back and listen to all of her former guests, you know, you can, but uh, I would, you know, we can highlight some of the show notes that I think of a particular, and yes, I am a former guest, but that's- that I was, was going to say, you're not biased at all, considering you and Rick were, were <laughs> guests on the podcast, well, were you? Yeah, that's a good one if you're a financial professional, but also just there's a lot of them I'll highlight, like Rune Christensen with Maker Dow, like some that go back years to really get a sense of what people are doing and building mm -hmm. in the in the digital asset community. It's really important, right? Get rid of get rid of uh, the hype and get rid of it. Laura's one of like honestly, she's the OG. Like she was the original podcaster that had a professional, you know, appearance and approach, and she brings her you know, journalistic integrity to bear in this asset class and asks the hard questions. It doesn't mm -hmm. let people like get away with things, which is really important. So yeah, top level, listen to Laura, read her book. Yeah. Um, well, well yeah, here, real quick, oh, yeah. real, can, I, can I just say a couple of things about Laura and everything too, uh, my experience? Yeah, great. Um, so yeah, Laura Shin, she's like my podcast muse, was an inspiration for, for us starting our own podcast, you know, being that no hype resource. So Laura- mm -hmm. This is a shout out to you. Thank you for all of yep. the work you do. 
And again, I'm going to call you out now. We got to get you on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> to be honest. She just wrote a book as well, yeah. which is a phenomenal read. Um, again, you've probably, uh, and there it is right there, the Cryptopians. Um, I won't read the whole thing. Uh, it's a long title, but- You won't read the whole it, title, but- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but uh, one of the things I love, it's a, it's a good combination. She really asks the tough questions. And one yeah. thing I'm trying to learn from as a podcast host is really starting to ask those tougher questions when she brings guests on, it's really, you really can sense that she's non-biased. She's really just trying to get to the root yeah. of everything that people say. I remember listening to an episode where she had the Solana founders on yeah. and, you know, again, they're a little bit younger, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty excited. They're, they're tech guys. And, you know, it's just great to like, see the dynamic between like, Hey, like you're, I'm going to ask you tough questions and, you know, I'm not just going to let yeah. you get away with, you know, the, you know, high level answer. So again, if you're someone who really needs that type of resource, Laura Shin's got to be, and it's a good balance between, you know, guests from the technology side and learning about the tech space of yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and then understanding also all of the, the other things that happen in the space. Laura, Laura was fundamental for me in my journey, you know, personally and professionally for digital assets. I, I used to live overseas and I remember flying, I would download all the episodes and listen to them on these long haul flights and just be like, List just not just like every, for every reason you just said, but but listening to her story, right? She's a you know former editor at Forbes and, and left there to go start and go all in on digital assets and you know just I was like wow she just totally shifted her career. That's telling and that that sent a powerful message, especially because you know she always says it, her no hype right it's right here your no hype resource for all things crypto. So I always appreciated that and. You know, literally like she is groundbreaking mm -hmm. in, in, uh, in not just digital asset podcasting, but just financial advice or not financial advice, but the financial industry in general, understanding digital assets. So mm -hmm. big props to, to Laura. Another one that is really good. And he came around a little bit later. And I know Tyrone also works, um, has a, has a agreement with Coindesk and Tyrone has a great podcast, but NLW, Nathaniel Whittemore, again, no hype, no agenda, just, un, you know, asking and really asking hard questions, but the way he thinks about things is, he, you know, is very different. He's very philosophical and likes to get into the, the meat of it. He has a daily podcast, so it is a lot, but a lot of them are short, like somewhere like 10 to 15, 20 minutes, mm -hmm. but really good. He kind of captures right now, like he, he captures kind of what's happening in the moment and how it relates through digital assets. He did, you know, a year or two ago, he had longer episodes and, you know, with, you know, over an hour with different guests on, and he's talked about maybe going back to it, but MLW, again, huge influence, like a really good host, really good interviewer, and really understands the intersection of pop culture and digital assets and the philosophy behind it and how it's all coming together. So mm -hmm. highly recommend him. And no, I've not been a guest on his show. So <laughs> we've reached out to him and he, and we've engaged with him on, yeah, well, actually, he's very yeah. responsive. Yeah. Which is really cool. And yeah, yeah I definitely I'll say about NLW. And again, um, a lot of his sponsors come from the crypto native space, but he is a Ooh. very disciplined voice, I would say for sure. Absolutely. Um, definitely a, a big, a big on the macro. And again, his big thing is, you know, the power structure and how it's changing and evolving. Um, so I think a lot of big picture um, is, is really good with NLW for sure. Yeah. Hold on here. I was having some technical difficulty. I'm going to get back there and share my screen again. So yeah, NLW, well done. Uh, love all your, your episodes. So I mean, I'm trying to click <laughs> some technical difficulty here. Hold on here. You can see my calendar. That's great. Da -da -da. Okay. So the other one, I'm going to give a shout out here, which I have been a guest on, but Crypto for Planners with Justin, who kind of is the, the main host, but Steve, as well as Adam can host. This is a podcast that is crowdsourced through the Planner DAO. So if you want to be a guest, join the DAO, go sign up. You, I think they'll even let you host, right? So it's pretty cool mm -hmm. to be able to do those types of things. So this is a really cool uh, podcast. I know, Mark, we've had a lot of these folks on our podcast. Um, it's fun to go and engage with them. Um, and then and the last one I'll say is Steve Sandusky, at which I have been a guest. He the, he has multiple podcasts that he runs, and he launched one, a couple, I think, a year ago called the Digital Money Advisor. So specific to that, if you're interested in listening to a financial professional have guests, I know Tyrone's been on there, and he's had you know a lot. I think he just did one with Rick, right? Heavyweights in this industry talking with Steve about digital assets. Another really good, powerful resource. Um, 
The last one I'll say is a more, not a podcast, but a class that, and I think I referenced this in, in one of our earlier uh, discussions. This is a class that I took and went through through Columbia University. So this is um, the blockchain in business beyond the hype. And I think you're catching a theme here, right? We really like things that don't have the hype like Lorcan's podcast. But this was a fundamental um, a course for me, I think I took it a couple of years ago when they when they first launched it, and it was just helped me understand how businesses are approaching digital assets. And on one of the other episodes of this three part series, I talked about right the difference between permission, private blockchains, and they do actually have a real valid use case in the in the in for businesses. And then and they talk a lot about this. What are the use cases in here? So this is a really good way if you really want to understand at a fundamental level how blockchains work and how businesses are using them, either the private permission ones or even some of the public ones, right? That they can go and access. Mm -hmm. Like, fa fantastic class. So um, I'm going to sh stop sharing my screen there. So Mark, I think the last thing I was going to share was a couple of books. So we're going to throw a lot of content at you here. So yeah. this was a book that was referenced in one of our earlier episodes, right? The uh, and Jack was a speaker, and at one of the um, in, in what the book? Jack what book is it? This is Crypto Assets: The Innovative Investor's Guide to Bitcoin and Beyond. Mm. So this is a really good book for advisors and just anybody out there in the community. And then some of the other ones that I think these are going to be more Bitcoin. But if you were really wanting to go far down the philosophical rabbit hole. Digital Gold from the, by Nathaniel Popper is a great one. And then the Bitcoin Standard from Saif Adina Moose, who you know, uh, has his own show as well. Those are definitely a little bit more philosophical on the Bitcoin side. So if you were interested in that, those last two books are uh, more for that. But all of these resources that I've just talked about really helped shape me and are one of the reasons why Arbor Digital exists today, right? If I didn't have Laura and I didn't have NLW and people that took the risk to go out and to go and really just create an entire career around it, it helped set the stage for, you know, because we're heavily regulated, right? So we have to be very careful and thoughtful of how mm -hmm. we do this, but it just helped me to be able to see, okay, let's take this next step. Let's do this. And so those are fantastic resources. Mm -hmm. So go do DAC FP, do the CDA, sprinkle these other resources in along the way. And I'll uh, Mark, anything else you want to add there? I know I just kind of, data dump for for a few minutes you can tell i get excited about this <laughs> we get excited about education right we want to share yeah. all we want to we want everyone to partake in the journey that we've gone through right which is you know it's it's an exciting time right like you can see this as a risk and you can see this and you can frame it up in your mind that this is going to be bad and and you know adhere to all the fud or you can see it for what it what it is and this is an evolution right this is a step forward in progress um, so if you do that, uh, you know, there's so many things and, and I guess, no, I'm going to go through a couple of books then on my end. And especially because we have different, and this is what I love about podcasts, yeah. you can share different resources. So I'm going to go back and share again, kind of what I got um, that was integral, right. For, for us. And especially as we built out the, and I'm going to scroll up here. So nfx.com. If you haven't been to that website, NFX stands for network effects. So this is an entire company built towards the mapping and study of network effects. And so what are network effects? And I think you hear that term thrown around a lot, especially in crypto, because all of these things, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Solana, Avalanche, mm. all of these networks being built, these blockchains, they're networks, right? And it's changing the way we think. And especially, you know, our investment thesis, you know, uh, towards the assets themselves is all is around network effects, right? It's it's yeah. a it's a huge piece to it. So we had to do our due diligence, do the education on network effects, and utilizing what we've learned in the past, right, from these new network businesses. And you talk about this all the time. That you know, look at all the most valuable technology companies, and which what are the most uh, valuable companies right now in the S and P five hundred, right? Um, and a lot of them, you'll hear a lot of people say that they are network effect businesses, right? Yeah. And with yep. DLT, distributed ledger technology, which is blockchain and crypto networks, that's that um, trend is going to continue with these types of assets. So if you're going to invest in, in anything in the crypto space, you have to have an understanding of network effects. 
So again, this is part of how we kind of differentiate ourselves as well. You know, I think this is actually something that needs to be added more to those programs, right? The CDA, DAC, yep, FD, or any of the blockchain. There's not enough done around this, right? So that's why I'm highlighting it for everyone listening right now. This is integral to opening your mind to like, oh, okay, I get this a lot more. Because it goes through the history on how networks, you know, talk about Pacific Bell or phone networks and how um, communication networks just over the history have been created and how value has been accrued in these networks. Um, so nfx.com. And then one of the specific things I'll highlight for them is the network effects Bible. Um, it's a massive read. And again, this kind of goes to, we've done the work. It's a lot of time, energy, and research to truly get an understanding of what is going on in this space. And if, if you are investing in this asset class and you don't know, and you haven't done deep dives and haven't done on this specific piece, then we're saying you're not, you haven't done enough. Right. Um, Mark, and I, I'll just highlight and add, if, and I, I go back to thinking around traditional, we talked about this, right? This traditional way of thinking, if you're doing dividend discount analysis or cash flow analysis, right? You're, you're going to miss all of this. Mm -hmm. You need to be open to understanding what you're talking about right here, Mark, with these network effects. And so I, you know, spot on, right? You need to be not just open-minded for these DAC FP and the CDA day, but for what you're talking about right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, been trying to reach out to them and I know they're busy and they have so many things going on. The team over at NFX, you know, hopefully we'll have them on in a future episode of the podcast, but they have a great YouTube video where they have short videos Go listen to their network effects analysis podcasts and shows on Facebook, Uber, um, any, um, I think Pinterest was one as well. Um, and they also do the network effects analysis of Bitcoin specifically. And I'm excited for them to do more in a specifically of the crypto space. So check right. them out. It's, a, it's fundamental to your knowledge of crypto asset investing. The next thing I'll go through is a free resource, education resource, which is A16Z Crypto Startup School. Now this originally, they, it was like a crypto canon, I think it was called. And that was the first, what I did for them. And, and it's been updated. Um, so this is where, and it's Andreessen Horowitz and his, uh, his fir investment firm, A16Z, and they offer it. And again, very simple, concise resource, disciplined around fundamentals, you know, how to build crypto companies, what are crypto companies, you know, gaming, everything beyond ju than just Bitcoin, um, definitely get into A16Zs. And obviously, they're investors in the space. So I can't say it's completely unbiased, but... Yeah, I'll, um, you know, when Mark, when we were doing our investment thesis, right? I, you, I think we talked about it. I used a lot of their resources to help yeah. right, dig in. And, and yeah, I know you did a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of what is our investment thesis, but they were a fantastic resource for that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and there's so much to go into. It's a big course. So again, as part of that year long education journey, we definitely feel that this plays a part in that. So if you do those designation programs, and then you're at the end of the year, I definitely think then you go into this specific resource, a16z.com slash crypto startup school. And again, you get into, they have an introduction, the future of trust. I really love it. And again, diversity in thought, language, and knowledge. You have to do that in this space. I, I'll say it again, diversity in thought, language, and knowledge. And that's what I think this uh, course specifically does. So huge piece here. And then I'll go into kind of more in the financial services side of things. ARCA is a hedge fund and um, they have a specific digital asset arm, which we are huge admirers and huge followers of them in the space. They've done a lot of great work. Um, I recommend you go there. If you're, a, uh, especially if you are a financial professional, um, go to their website, go to all of the resources they have. And here's where I'll start going. They have a blog. They actually just released, I guess, what they're calling the next evolution of what uh, an investment uh, fund is under the 40 Act. Um, it's called the BTF, Blockchain Transferred Fund. So that'll be exciting. Go read up on that. Um, they host a lot of their own conferences. Um, and again, I, I can't stress this enough. If you're looking for up-to-date resources, especially specific to financial services, they're, they're a must, right? Um, so definitely go into their conference recordings. Um, and again, they, they have done a lot of great work on the classification. And again, if you're, go if you're kind of adhering to there's much more to this space than just Bitcoin and Ethereum, you have to go to them. 
And so that's where one of the biggest pieces I'll highlight for them is going to the different types of digital assets. And they have a great resource here going through exploring the digital asset ecosystem. So go through here again, it's ar.ca um, is their website. And then you can go into their resources channel um, there and go to their blog, go check out a lot of their videos. Um, you're gonna, just gonna get so much, uh, again, no hype completely. And they've been doing this work since, you know, well before 2016. So um, can't say enough about them. So again, shout out to the team over there at ARCA. Thank you for everything you do. Uh, Matt, any, anything else you'd add from what ARCA does? No, we covered, covered it well, Mark. Yeah. Okay. Another fantastic resource. All right. The last education program I'll go before I kind of go into some of the books that I found heavily influential where it, obviously this is kind of a big one and you, you may like, you may not like it, you know, fan favorite or maybe fan uh, not favorite, uh, Gary Gensler, his MIT open course on blockchain. Um, definitely, if you want to go see what they were doing it over at MIT well before any of the hype, um, go over here. You can go see the video lectures and get the slides. Um, it's, uh, you know, we'll, we'll put the links in the, in the show notes, but um, definitely go check that out. It's a little bit longer. Again, it's a pretty much same thing, sit and learn, but um, a great free resource um, to go send people to. And then uh, the, I guess the, now what I want to go to is just a, a platform uh, called Real Vision Crypto. Um, so Raul Paul um, started, you know, a, a financial services media company more on the traditional side, and now they have a crypto arm. So I won't spend too much time in there, but great resource. Again, a lot of different diversity and thought, and you get a lot of people who are building in this space um, in interviews, and they do a lot of research reports. They've partnered with Delphi Digital to offer more of an offering. So again, really suggest you go over to Real Vision Crypto uh, to check out what they have there. Uh, the last thing I'll kind of go to now is some books. So for me, and I'm going to go through, so maybe some books you wouldn't think of when you're thinking of crypto and a little more outside that will help you open your mind a little bit more. And the two books I'll recommend first are going to be by uh, somebody named Neil Ferguson. So the first book that I read, um, which was, is called The Ascent of Money, right? Really dives into the history of money and how money in its current form ascended to where it is today. Really influential, especially if you're understanding how Bitcoin has been evolving. Um, it really takes you out of what do I think I know about money and really understanding it from a different lens, right? And I think, Matt, you shared a couple other books that kind of go into that. Um, but this is not crypto native. It's more it, like there is some mention about crypto and about Bitcoin and how the, the next evolution of money could look in the digital age. Um, but this was in 2009, this was written. So again, really opens the mind and you'll be able to make a lot of connections that you not normally wouldn't have. And then there's a follow-up book by him that I think is huge, especially when you combine it with kind of network effects, right? It's called The Square and the Tower. And it's really about networks and power. And it goes into how really hierarchies and networks have really shaped societies and um, how they've been built and the power structures that live within them. They were all done by networks. And that's, I think, been the fascinating thing for me about crypto is really just how much power networks have and then why network effects are so important to emerging technologies, right? And that's where it, this is a history of how networks and power have evolved. And I think it's a huge learning experience and a huge opening of the mind when you really have that understanding of, oh my gosh, networks have actually shaped everything that, have, that has you know, come to fruition and how, our, and how our systems have evolved. But Matt, I, I mean, especially on networks, I know you have a lot of thoughts on networks and network effects. Um, what do you think about that? Yeah, I haven't specifically read this book, Mark. I need to because I think one of the one of the things that I, you know I talked earlier one of the podcasts, NLW. He also does a really good job of capturing the power shift that's coming right between the current institutions and the incumbent institutions, whether that's government or existing banking infrastructure or whatever it is. Like these networks have the power to disrupt all of them, and I think that's something that. I don't know if a lot of people are ready for yet. So I had, like I said, I haven't read this book, but I, from what you're just saying, it sounds like it, it kind of is, is a correlate to that, to that theme. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I firmly believe that. I mean, mm -hmm. you wrapping up a couple of ideas here, you, you, you know, you look at the investment that you were talking about 
uh, ARCA and A16Z and like you've heard me say this before, it's like, look at, look at the traditional equity markets for clues of how technology and networks can disrupt just the traditional financial portfolio, right? What are the dominant players there? I say this, you know, we're not going to mean revert back to the 90s mm. where it's big oil and big banks that are going to dominate the S&P. So just look for clues of what's already happened in the traditional world of how these networks and the power is going to shift. And it's like, I view it in my mind, it's like a vortex with this black hole. It's just going to keep getting bigger and start sucking in these other incumbent powers. And it's going to happen. And there's going to be a lot of people that don't want it to happen. Mm -hmm. Right. But that's what technology does. Cause at the end of the day, right. It's technology and it's networks. Yeah. And again, this book specifically, uh, if you're listening to this uh, again, Neil Ferguson, the square in the tower, I think really go, delves into the dynamics between the relationships between networks and the hierarchies that create the networks and how it disrupts traditional hierarchies and networks and this evolution over the course of history and how this has happened for centuries. And it's kind of what we're seeing mm -hmm. right now, right? We are in the middle of it right now in the next evolution. So yeah. again, really good book on that. Uh, the last the last couple I'll go into is one called Bubble or Revolution. Um, Neil Mehta, Adi Agashi, and Parth Detroja. Again, apologies if I just, you know, just completely mispronounce any of those names, but this is a really good book. And again, because it answers that question, bubble or revolution, right? I think that a lot of the things you think you hear in traditional media, and they ask a lot of the hard questions, right, about crypto and about blockchain um, specifically. And what's the no hype? So again, huge book there. Um, again, I'm not going to spoil everything. And then the last one I'll talk to again, Nick hmm, Batia yeah. and Layered Money really important book. Um, and it goes to the, and again, how we view money and the, the, um, the journey of money, and especially from gold to dollars and now to big Bitcoin and possibly uh, central bank digital currencies. Again, discipline voice, more of an academic voice. And again, which mm -hmm. I thought, which I really took away from this book. Um, and again, this isn't a guy who's, you know, sitting here shilling coins or anything like that. This, this, author is all about the academic side and studying uh, the technology and especially from the money aspect. So really good book. And that's going to wrap it up for us. We've gone over podcast, book, education platforms, free, paid for, you name it. So at the end of this series, we promised that you would have at least a direction to answer the question, where should I start? So again, just to recap, take a year where you're gonna go learn about blockchain and crypto. You have two programs uh, that you can dedicate time to, and then you have multi, and then you have these other programs that you could add as supplemental. And then on top of that, the books. Now you may be wondering, how in the heck did we find time to do, to learn and do all that, and then also do what we do? Um, and that's where, yes, it has been a lot of work. It's been a multi-year process. Um, I know I, for me, the education piece never stops. and. Um, it's been three years running uh, and I, it's not going to stop for the time being, but, uh, Matt, any last thoughts you'd have on the education piece, uh, for anyone listening here. Come with an open mind and be ready to learn and see where it takes you. Cause it's been a really exciting and fun journey for me personally and professionally over the last, I don't know, almost 10, 11 years with digital assets. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Thanks, Matt. And thank you for doing this series with me. I can't of wait to bring course. you back on and for us to do more together. Um, for everyone who's listening, thanks for watch, for listening and watching all three episodes. We hope this has been valuable. Um, please share any feedback with us. If you yourself have any education resources, post it on our YouTube channel, post it in the links in the comments, engage with everyone else in the comments and share your education resources. We know there are a ton out there and yeah. we've only gone through just a sliver, a small sliver of what's available. So yeah, we know we, that- yeah. If we missed anything, please, yeah, like Mark said, add it, because there's a lot of really good, high-quality stuff out there that we may have missed, and apologies if we did. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, please make sure to remember, tell somebody today that you care about them. We will see you on the next edition of the Asset Revolution, and have a great day.